What? What, boys? Hey! Stop stuttering! Even if you don't know who he is, you've probably seen clips of Tyler1 before. Or, at least, clips of his so-called autism attacks. If you do know him, you're aware that he's been one of the most popular personalities in League of Legends for almost a decade at this point. As entertaining as he is, it's easy to relegate him to being the guy that acts stupid for views. But there's much more beneath the surface. From his rise to fame, the dark side of being a popular streamer, and even the conspiracy against him. This is the story of Tyler1. After gaming on YouTube peaked in the early 2010s and started declining, Twitch rallied to fill the vacuum left by its predecessor. This wave, like all waves, was in need of strong personalities to protagonize it, but it was unknown what kind of people would show up to fulfill that role. Unlike YouTube gaming, which largely focused on lighthearted and well-edited gameplay videos, Twitch was all about putting copious amounts of time into competitive games. Though this worked great with audiences, who enjoyed the seemingly endless IV drip of content, this more effort-intensive format took its toll on streamers. Cases of being burned out and exhausted, as well as having their personal life being negatively affected from streaming too much, became commonplace. On top of that, a typical side effect of excessive exposure to a competitive environment is that it tends to turn people into combative rageaholics. Of course, it's no secret that gamers aren't particularly known for their patience and good exercise of judgment. But the fact that these people were live streaming meant that they'd be unable to edit out their raunchier bits. Quickly, that would become part of the appeal of streaming. After all, who doesn't get entertained by seeing someone lose their mind over a video game? It's like watching Formula One. There's always a part of you rooting for someone to crash. Sure, it might upset those in charge of moderating and keeping online environments safe, but, for the viewers, the more toxic, the better. Case in points, Tyler1, the prototypical toxic player, as hyper-competitive, loudmouthed, and aggressive as they come, all while retaining his viewers' empathy and support on a massive scale. However, is it rewarding enough that it justifies the stress that comes from it? And how can this dynamic survive the pressures against what is deemed toxic behavior? Today, we'll find out. Though very little is known about Tyler's childhood and upbringing, we have a plethora of images of him as a kid, mostly thanks to his own efforts at showing them to his audience. We also know that he has a younger brother, Eric, who also streams on Twitch as erob221. It seems like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Despite his openness to exposing himself, Tyler has remained remarkably private about his personal life, save for a few appearances of his mom here and there. Long before he would permanently alter the shape of his head by wearing headsets for too long, Tyler was wearing a completely different kind of headgear. From 2011 to 2013, Tyler played varsity football as both running back and free safety at Mark Twain High School in Missouri. Judging from a number of Tyler's highlights, it seems he was good at what he did, which is pretty impressive for a football player that's 5'6". According to an interview he gave at the age of 18, he'd already been lifting weights for four years without missing a day at that point. This dedication did not go unnoticed, as it seems before he'd even finished high school, he'd already signed with Central Methodist University to play football for their team. According to its website, Tyler was on the Dean's List, a clear indication that he also excelled academically. Despite initially majoring in strength and conditioning, he eventually switched his major to computer science all while playing for the CMU team, even being recognized for athletic achievement and volunteering for service day at a point. I'm not particularly well versed in sports ball myself, but apparently Tyler had 12 carries for 127 yards and a touchdown during a game, which seems to be worthy of note. However, beneath the local news coverage worthy veneer of his academic life, Tyler's competitive drive wasn't satisfied by football, and he needed something else, something more intense to fulfill it. In 2013, his Twitch account wasn't particularly noteworthy. However, it would become the outlet for his interest in video games to manifest, which would eventually make him famous. In 2014, Tyler managed to rank 14th on the North American League of Legends ladder, and as time slowly rolled by, he accrued a following, even if small compared to what he would eventually have. Additionally, it was as if he made the audio of every single one of his streams unnecessarily loud and jarring on purpose, 
the sheer strangeness of which was enough to attract some viewers. The main event wasn't when the game was being played as it was supposed to be. Rather, it was when things went sour and fell apart that the real Tyler 1 experience would begin. To put it in blunt terms, Tyler was the embodiment of what would happen if the word toxic streamed league and could bench 425 pounds. Now, don't get me wrong, as of the past few years, the concept of a gamer moment has taken on a somewhat different and more radical meaning, which, fortunately, Tyler hasn't had many issues with. Even when he did, his, uh, natural immunity kept it in check, if you know what I mean. No, Tyler's brand of toxicity, if you can call it that, consisted mostly of relentless verbal abuse of his teammates through chat whenever they did something he didn't like. That sounds like something no one could get away with, but see, Tyler had tact. Whenever he decided to antagonize his teammates, he would also throw the game in a comically destructive way, and followed it up with a played-up fit of rage that would entertain his audience so much they didn't mind how much of a nuisance he was being to the other players at all. As a matter of fact, other Toxic League players rallied to him as their de facto representative. His go-to technique of kamikaze bombing a game was dubbed running it down mid, which essentially meant playing the game with no strategy or cooperation, just repeatedly heading straight for the enemy's base as fast as possible and dying in the process. A lot of his earlier unhinged activities took place from 2013 to 2015, which unfortunately we don't have archived, though we can use our imagination based on later examples of his behavior. The degree of pettiness he came to was truly bewildering to witness. While he streamed, he would iconically keep a notepad open where he would type down the nicknames of the players who wronged him in some way, along with the reason why he had a problem with them. This document was called the Int List, as whenever Tyler happened to get put in a match with any of them in his team, he would start doing what is called intentional feeding, meaning dying to the other team on purpose in order to make them more powerful and ultimately lose the game. The mean-spirited conflict that Tyler seemed to bring with him to every game wasn't a bug, it was a feature. Whenever his watchers weren't making fun of his height or truncated skull shape, they were making donations with purposely irritating or hostile messages in order to push him into a fit, which Tyler would supply them with abundantly. Many hilarious instances of this have been clipped, such as a running gag where people send in donations with racial slurs to be read out by the stream's text-to-speech application in order to try and purposely get his stream punished by Twitch, to which he usually reacts by screaming as loud as he can in order to drown out the sound. Some noteworthy donations that I can read include, I hope you know that 90% of your viewers are submissive homosexuals who want you to insult and degrade them. I know, because I'm one of them. For real, when Rosa Parks saw your hair, she sat in the back of the barber shop. By the way, you might be a good replacement for Brett Favor because your hairline was always a quarterback. Hey Tyler, it's me, your dad. Dad Eiler. You ran away from home nine years ago. I just want to say I overreacted back then. I know you had that homosexual phase back then and I'm willing to accept you as my gay little baby boy. Come home, son. Surrounded by a crowd like this, suddenly the toxic outbursts don't look so out of place. His rage was so omnidirectional, he didn't limit it to fighting his teammates and his audience. In his relentless pursuit of something to be aggravated at, he eventually begins being mad at himself whenever he stutters or otherwise misspeaks. This, paired with his almost compulsive tendency to scream non-verbally and shake whenever something he didn't like happened, affectionately called autism attacks by his fanbase, got people wondering if he actually had a diagnosis diagnosis of some kind that made him that way. These speculations about him being autistic became amplified to such an extent that he actually went as far as doing an online autism test in order to prove that he didn't have it. Predictably, it didn't go quite as he intended, as the test scored people from 0 to 50, and Tyler scored an exactly 25, meaning it was at least inconclusive. Of course, this was more than enough for his viewership to consider him a confirmed Aspie. All in all, throughout his entire career as a League streamer, he got banned on a total of 22 different accounts. This is due to the fact that, whenever an account of his would get banned for things, like telling people to keep themselves safe, or throw games by going AFK, he would just openly make another account to ban evade, rinse, and repeat. Among his many means of being purposely obnoxious and off-kilter, he would almost exclusively play as Draven. This is significant because, every month, Riot patches the game to balance the champions out, nerfing some and powering others up, 
in order to keep the game fair while preserving champion diversity. A lot of competitive players and streamers would follow the patch notes and pick whatever champion was the most buffed up that month in order to win as much as possible. Tyler picking Draven was going extremely against the grain, considering Draven hadn't been anywhere near the top champion for years. Regardless, he still managed to retool Draven as his main, and somehow outcompete other players who were selecting for only the most powerful champions. Shockingly enough, he managed to keep his ridiculous routine up for three years with little to no consequence. Until finally, in 2016, Disco Heat, a YouTuber whose account was dedicated to documenting Toxic League players, posted a video about one of Tyler's AFK exploits. This brought a lot of attention to Tyler and his toxicity, and as a consequence, he decided of his own volition to become a changed man claiming to be reformed. A video would be uploaded to Tyler's YouTube account called Tyler One Draven Hype Montage, which now stands at over 7 million views, wherein he would deliver a speech over clubbed to death from the Matrix about how he'd matured past being toxic and was gearing up to do a League of Legends world tour, ranking first place in every region available. People were already pretty entertained by him going all out on every stream, but now there were stakes involved. The spectacle became watching Tyler walk a tightrope, struggling as hard as he could to resist the urge to do what his instincts told him to. His followers on Twitch soared from 5,000 to over 92,000 within the month. Everyone was invested in watching his resolution fizzle out in real time. Surprising no one, his improved behavior would oscillate, and the old Tyler would intermittently reappear, leading many to make fun of his claims of being reformed. Overall though, it seems that he did genuinely change his playing style to a more conventional one, and stopped throwing and trolling games. This would be pointless, however, as just a couple of weeks after his decision to become reformed, something quite unexpected would happen. While Tyler was streaming and just finishing up a match, his screen would go black and Tyler would remain silent for a moment. After a while, he would simply confirm that he'd been banned. This wasn't the regular kind of ban that Tyler was acquainted with and could easily get around. This was an ID ban, meaning if he were to create a new account to play from, the League client would trace it back to him and instantly have it banned as well. Inspecting the boards, Tyler found an explanation for his indefinite banning posted by someone from the Riot Games staff, Riot Socrates, saying, Hey all, instant feedback catches the most unsportsmanlike players in League, but some go out of their way to continue ruining games for the community. Because of a well-documented history of account bans for verbal abuse, intentional feeding, as well as account sharing and purchasing, evasion of sportsmanship systems, and player harassment, we will not allow Tyler1 to hold a League of Legends account, indefinitely. Any account definitively used by him will be banned immediately upon identification. We know we're not perfect, and this dragged on too long, but we want you to know, when the rare player comes along who's a genuine jerk, we've still got your back. It was instantly clear that this wasn't a decision based on a spontaneous call for his banning, but rather an internal Riot staffer's arbitrary dislike of Tyler1. As of the latest archive of Riot Socrates' post, it had 6,000 visible downvotes and over 4,000 comments, most of which were coming out in support of Tyler. People were pointing out that he'd leveled up his latest account on stream, meaning it wasn't bought or leveled up by someone else for him, and whenever there was trolling going on, it wasn't initiated by him. Additionally, they'd go on to point out other streamers that were also extremely toxic, but for whatever reason, had Riot look the other way. It really did seem like people that worked at Riot held a grudge against Tyler, as not much later after his ban, a clip would surface of Riot Freak, a game designer for Riot Games, saying that he was sad that someone as vile as Tyler was making money off of League. That his only marketable skill was to be an a-hole, describing him as nothing but a rager. Eventually, the stars aligned while Tyler was playing on one of his secret accounts, and he happened to be matched against Freak on the same lane, meaning they'd necessarily face off against each other. Of course, Tyler took this opportunity to exact revenge for what was said in the clip, decimating Freak. Considering how rare of a punishment an ID ban is, people were taken aback that it was applied to Tyler of all people. In Tyler's own streams, you could see other players display way worse behavior than he did and go unpunished. It was particularly aggravating that this took place just as he was cutting out his more toxic tendencies. A testament to his dedication to no longer being toxic is that, even when he just discovered that he was banned, and as people were sending in donos with straight up insults, his reaction was not an angry one, but solemn dissatisfaction. It was a dark day for Tyler1.
On the 2nd of May, Tyler uploaded a video to his YouTube account titled, Vlog About What Happened and Future Plans, where he would open up about his banning. He mentions that he was already expecting it since Disco Heat's video on him, but points out that what made the Riot staff dislike him so much was that he was the top league streamer and good at the game while being toxic which went against one of their main maxims that claimed non-toxic players won more games. He also implies Meteos, another professional League of Legends player, had something to do with his banning, whether directly or indirectly, as just a few days prior to Tyler's ban, Meteos was talking about how toxic he was, a clip of which has survived on YouTube to this day. What made this ironic is the fact that, as the people on the League forums pointed out, Meteos had his own history of being toxic himself. Regardless, it doesn't seem Tyler was particularly up in arms about the ban, saying that the only reason he doesn't try to keep evading it and streaming it on his Twitch account was because that would put his Twitch account at risk of being banned as well. His alternative solution was to just stream games other than League. The diversification efforts began with playing things like Outlast, in the classic horror gameplay formats, and coaching videos where Tyler watched someone else play League and commented. Though these videos were pretty successful, getting up to hundreds of thousands and occasionally breaking into over a million views, Tyler eventually settled into his new competitive game of choice, Overwatch. Fulfilling every expectation, Tyler went in on Overwatch, with all the toxicity that he had pent up from no longer streaming League. However, it wouldn't take very long until his reputation caught up to him once again. After a bout of Tyler's usual flaming his teammates for not being up to par, Blizzard, the company responsible for Overwatch, would decide that letting Tyler do his thing on their game risked having his style of playing becoming associated with their game, as it did League. In order to prevent this from happening, they instantly put him in a 10-year-long mute, meaning he was banned from ever communicating with other players in the game. Tyler attempted to circumvent this ban by buying another copy of the game, only to find out that, before he even signed in, the ban was already active on his new copy. They weren't taking any chances with Tyler, in fear that he would taint their image. Besides playing a variety of different games, Tyler also began doing unorthodox streams where he wouldn't game at all. For example, one of his videos that cracked a million views was called Chef Tyler One Protein Cake, where, as the title suggests, he just bakes cake with whey protein. Much to the chagrin of people who expected his online presence to dwindle after no longer having access to League, it seemed like Tyler could do pretty much whatever he wanted to on stream, no matter how unconventional, and people would still watch just for his personality. There was a noticeably large larger response to the videos that were just spoofs as opposed to gaming, which broke expectations. His audience actually became happy he got banned from League, as now, they could get more of Tyler on his own as opposed to just playing games. It was only during this variety era that you could have more candid moments where Tyler exposed his sensitive side, such as when his mom texted him after getting out of a surgery and he cried on stream. This type of thing made it difficult to relegate him to a purely mean-spirited troll. Tyler also attended TwitchCon 2016, where he would meet for the first time his girlfriend and fellow streamer Michaela Edwards, who he's still together with. Tyler's channel and Twitch account grew exponentially during this period, and everyone that had written him off as just a rager were being forced to deal with the fact that he wasn't going anywhere. A year later, in 2017, the animosity Riot employees had for Tyler would become even more explicit, as messages from the official Discord server for r slash League of Legends would leak. Well, not exactly leak, since they were never really private in the first place. A lead Riot employee, Riot Sanjuro, would post the following messages in reference to Tyler. Free Tyler won to make $100,000 plus a year on being a dick in a game he didn't make. He looks like a damn homunculus to be honest. It's fine, he'll die from a dick overdose or testicular cancer from all the steroids. Then we'll be Gucci. You know how much bullshit he caused me, personally? I've spent many, many hours of my workday dealing with his bullshit. I mean, I get it. I get the comedy of his streams and his brand, but it's at the expense of a lot of other innocent people, and that's not cool. He's had 20 plus accounts permabanned. He only does it for the views and the dollars. With the phrase, Free Tyler 1, Sanjuro is referring to the hashtag Free Tyler 1 campaign to get Riot to unban him that got relatively popular, with people holding signs with the hashtag at League events and making change.org campaigns for it. 
The campaigns would become so ubiquitous and rife with anti-riot sentiments that, eventually, League events would include no hashtag free Tyler one or any references to it in their rules of conduct. It's safe to say that things got out of hand. Briefly after this started making the rounds in the community, Sanjuro would come out and not only confirm that the messages were his, but doubled down on them, getting a whopping negative 18,000 votes on Reddit after he posted, Dude, come on, that's my personal take on the situation. I don't speak for the company on live chats. I'm my own person. What people pointed out in the replies to this post was that this wasn't the first instance of Sanjuro instantly becoming upset at the mention of Tyler1. In a league match, when someone posted hashtag free Tyler1 to chat, he would tell them to, and I quote, eat a d This would technically qualify as toxic behavior, but I digress. Soon, more posts would surface. I don't wish death upon anyone, and I actually find him pretty funny. Don't take real-time chat out of context, though. This seems like an attempt to do damage control over what he'd said, but it was too little, too late. Both on Reddit and Discord, people were warning him that, even if Tyler One's fans could do little more than complain about the ban, Riot would definitely not like the fact that one of their lead representatives was saying things like that online, especially with their obsession with fighting toxicity wherever it may be. He would make yet another post to Reddit, saying, Reddit, League players, Tyler, I displayed a gross error in judgment last night and wholeheartedly apologize for my comments. They were out of line and not what any of you deserve to hear, especially from a rioter. I'll be taking time away from Reddit, Discord, and in-game chat to reflect on how I communicate with players. Sorry again for the insults and the language. Tyler would take to Twitter to comment on this unfortunate situation. It really sucks that some people still hold a massive grudge against old Tyler1 and refuse to acknowledge I've changed. With that being said, I have no hard feelings towards the guy. It happens. On a stream update, he would follow this comment up by defending himself against the things Sanjuro had said about him. I do not do steroids. I have never taken any kind of drugs like that. I don't do cocaine. I do not drink alcohol. I do not drink soda. I don't do any of that. None of it. Never have. Never will. I haven't drunk a soda since 8th grade. I do not have cancer in my nutsack, and I never will, hopefully. As predicted by pretty much everyone, it seems that Riot fired Sanjuro, as his LinkedIn profile was updated to show that his time at the company had ended. On Discord, when people told him that this would happen, he essentially blamed them for publicizing his mistake so much, saying, Y'all ruined my life. Another staffer, Riot Cactopus, would update the League subreddit with a couple of posts. To be very clear here, what was said is not okay and we take it extremely seriously. I'd like to apologize on behalf of Riot to both Tyler1 and the community for this. We will be taking action internally to address this, although it would not be appropriate to go into specifics here. No one at Riot is above reproach. Neither Tyler1 nor any other player deserves that. Right now, we're working on a clear policy that explains how ID bans work for all players. That includes explicit guidelines for how an ID banned player can get unbanned. Starting very soon, we'll be proactive about reaching out to ID banned players and sharing those guidelines. No rioters should be freely discussing ID banned players or their situations. If anyone else gets ID banned, we'll deal with that person fairly and privately. From this moment forward, you should expect that to be our policy. The last part of the second post would immediately send Tyler's fans into a frenzy, as it now seems that Riot was reconsidering the ID ban, to which Cactopus would make an edit to clarify. When we talk about potentially lifting ID bans, identity bans in the future, we're not talking about ever giving back anyone their banned accounts. With very rare exceptions, banned accounts are banned forever. Now, despite this looking like an attempt to shoot down talks about unbanning Tyler, everyone read between the lines and realized this only meant that no specific account previously used by him would become unbanned, but that his ID ban could certainly be lifted. Meanwhile, Tyler's antics continued to fall squarely in the realm of reformed. For example, since he couldn't participate in any league championships, he would spectate and comment on games while parodying official league championship broadcasts, poorly green screening himself into a stadium setting or next to commentators, as well as showing fake advertisements. Eventually, this would materialize into the TCN, the Tyler 1 Championship Series which Tyler would host himself, managing to get up to over 200,000 concurrent viewers and awarding $10,000 to the winning team, despite having no sponsors. What he lacked in anger management, Tyler had in dedication to his craft. 
the rumors of the relationship between Riot Games and Tyler improving, to the point of a potential lifting of his ID ban, were confirmed in October 2017, when Tyler would upload a video called, Update on My League Ban. In it, he reveals that he has been in talks with Riot, and that they were indeed considering him for a ban lift though he would have to demonstrate good behavior by having an account of his officially evaluated as non-toxic over the course of a month. His genuinely contrite attitude certainly helped the process along, though it was probably leveraged by the fact that, just a few months prior, Tyler had a very successful stream playing Dota 2, the main competitor to League of Legends. Knowing that, with his now massive popularity, he could bring a lot of new players into whatever game he decided to settle with, Riot made it official. The ban would be lifted. In January of 2018, Tyler would make a stream announcing his return to League of Legends in glorious style, completely decked out in Draven cosplay, achieving the astronomic and record-breaking mark of 382,000 concurrent viewers live. He would also tweet it out, saying, After 613 days of intense rehab, I am finally unbanned from League of Legends. We'll start streaming again Monday, 3 p.m. CT, let's go. Kotaku would contact Riot in the wake of this announcement, only to get official confirmation from the horse's mouth that Tyler was free to stream League once again, which he would go on to do for an insane streak of 16 days in a row for 10 hours a day. This culminated in his YouTube account finally achieving 1 million subscribers, which, to be honest, was very long overdue considering how popular he was. This marked a major shift, not only for Tyler's career, but also for the League community in general. Tyler1 was back to business at full throttle, and this initially got people extremely excited for obvious reasons. He had become the underdog of Twitch for two years now, and finally, the tables turned and he could do what he was best at, playing League. However, he would still do the occasional variety stream, including probably his most legendary and popular one, A Day in the Life of Tyler1 IRL. It was, more or less, in the same vein as his TCN presentations, but with much more creative ambition. It's hard for me to encapsulate the entirety of that stream into a brief description, but as the title suggests, it was a lengthy green screen extravaganza of Tyler depicting himself as some kind of celebrity superstar. Highlights include Tyler piloting a helicopter, riding a bike to initial D music, and last but not least, talking to the then President of the United States, Donald Trump, who asks him to retrieve lost nuclear codes. Quite the eventful day. It was one large victory lap for Tyler, who was now seen as one of the faces of Twitch streaming. Unfortunately, despite this honeymoon phase being extremely enjoyable for both his viewers and outsiders curious about the Tyler 1 phenomenon, soon enough, a bitter aftertaste would settle in. The people who saw his banning from League as a good thing would turn out to be more right than they ever wanted to be. By the middle of 2018, Tyler was already exhibiting signs that, long term, his return to League was not healthy for him. At that point, people were already acquainted with the generally loud and aggressive way that Tyler carried himself. As it was clear, that was just him being amped up and trying his best to be entertaining. In one particular moment, though, this was not the case. He would break his typically joyful character and get genuinely upset. During his usual League stream, he was put on the same team as someone who was inting and trolling the game. And as he points out, if he were to flame this person in chat for doing it, he'd be the one getting punished, not the player. He also remarks that even if he were to report it, nothing would happen, which enraged him to the point that, as soon as the match was lost and the defeat animation began, he immediately quit the game. After a few minutes of him explaining why he was so frustrated to his viewers, he would touch on the fact that Riot's patches to supposedly balance the champions out were making the game unplayable. After almost 10 minutes of trying his best to keep his cool, he would completely lose it. I'm so sick of this f***ing company. The trash! Fix the guy! It sucks playing this sh And I'm fing addicted! So I can't quit! I'm so sick of this sh I'm done! I'm done streaming! I cannot stream this game anymore! It is garbage! It was very concerning to see Tyler like that, considering how uncharacteristic it was of him. Even more concerning was the fact that the very next day, he was once again streaming League for over 10 hours straight. Many people found themselves relating to the things Tyler had said, identifying with being addicted to a game they knew was terrible. But even then, most of them played casually. Tyler had to do it for hours on end as his job every single day. It was an obligation. This was just one of the many occasions where Tyler would expound on his borderline abusive relationship with League of Legends. 
In another clip, he would swear off playing League off stream after playing a total of 26 games and losing 18 due to people trolling games without punishment. As he told this story, he essentially described suffering from what is called the gambler's fallacy, meaning the compulsive inability to stop playing after a loss, which almost made him miss his daily workout, something that he evidently holds very dear. He's also said that he not only sees the League client when he closes his eyes sometimes, but actually has nightmares about playing a 50 minute long match and losing using it. According to him, it's gotten so bad that he's begun feeling like, when his teammates play poorly, it actually affects him on a physiological level, as after a few bad or trolled matches, he would become physically ill with stomach and headaches. Due to the way that League works, Tyler needs to play constantly in order to hold on to his top rank of the season, usually resulting in 40-hour marathons and around 200 hours of streaming in a month. He used to take month-long breaks from streaming to get proper rest for his throat and heal from all the screaming, but since this is his full-time job, vacations have gotten less and less frequent. In one article, he mentions playing League for up to 15 hours a day. It's a job that certainly pays well, with Tyler alleging to have made over $5 million, but for how long can he keep it up? The stress from the gaming alone would be enough to break some people, without even accounting for occupational hazards such as people swatting him and his girlfriend. As a matter of fact, it's surprising he can even maintain a healthy personal life and relationship with the kind of hours he's putting in. Overall, it does seem like he enjoys this lifestyle a lot, but at the same time, it takes its toll. Considering the extremely tragic circumstances other streamers such as Etika and Wreckful have passed away in, one must wonder how bad for your mental health it is to be in such close and constant contact with people online. Tyler has actually commented on Wreckful's story with a rather healthy take on never giving up on people even if they are struggling with mental health problems. Fortunately, Tyler doesn't seem to have a pre-existing tendency towards depression or anything like that, but it's not as if he's completely out of the woods just because of that. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure that Tyler is being transparent when he displays being comfortable with his profession, I'm just hoping it stays that way for the foreseeable future. Ultimately, no one can speak for content creators better than themselves insofar as what they should do with their career. On the other hand, it's never too early to be concerned with someone when they show signs of struggling with something. Many people tend to write it off since, well, these e-celebs make so much money, so how could they possibly be suffering? Time flies when you're having fun, and as of this year, Tyler's devotion to League of Legends is completing its 10-year birthday. But speaking of time, we've only lived in a world where being a streamer is a job for, what, a few years? The fact that it's such a recent phenomenon means we can't possibly predict the ultimate effects of practicing this as a job for the better part of your life, whether those effects are good or bad in the long run. But maybe that's just me being a doomer. Maybe I've done so many videos on people with the most abominable stark life stories that, even when I'm talking about someone who is doing well for themselves, I see the downsides that aren't there. I will say that, hopefully, Tyler manages to retire from Twitch streaming mentally unscathed and forms a family with Michaela as they've expressed they want to do. It certainly would be the happy ending to a story with plenty of triumphs already. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time, leave me alone. Sounds before, and it's just not that funny anymore.